Hey, I'm Austin. And I'm Chris. And this is going to be our third video on the channel we're calling Digital Power Trip. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a new console from Nintendo that they're calling the Nintendo Switch. And the Switch was announced Thursday, yeah, right? Yeah, Thursday. Uh, Nintendo did a press conference, um, keynote kind of thing that you would kind of see Apple doing most of the time. Uh, just an event to let everybody know what's going on with their new product. It was a really big to do. There were a lot of uh, famous vloggers there. I know I Justine was there. Uh, Casey Neistat was there. Uh, who's Casey's buddy? What's that guy's name? I'm not sure. Sean Duras. Sean Duras was there. Austin Evans, I know, is another one that was there. A big YouTube name in the tech community. Uh, but there were a lot of people there because this is kind of a big deal. Uh, it's the newest thing that Nintendo's had out since the Wii U. Right. Uh, and everybody knows the Wii U was kind of a... I won't say a flop. I mean, it, Nintendo people are Nintendo people. They're going to buy Nintendo products right. regardless of what they are. Kind of like Apple people. But I liken the Wii U, uh, as far as a console release, to that of the Philips CDI. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows how bad the CDI was. Uh, Actually, I bet they don't. I bet you half the people watching this have never even heard of the CDI. Let's just say that it almost turned me away from video games for the rest of my life and scarred me as a child. So. <laughs> but I will say, technologically, it was kind of cool because it was the first CD-based gaming system. It also, um, they, they partnered with Paramount and they had movies on disc uh, that was the first uh, compact disc medium for movies that was out. They had the full-size laser disc, but that was the first uh, compact disc one that was out. But all the games were pretty much like, uh, I would call it what, turn ba no, not even turn-based. It was like... Kind of like point-and-click adventure type thing. Yes, exactly. Choo choo pick a path. But anyway, it was unsuccessful. Let's no, just terrible. leave it at that. But uh, So this is... This is a big deal for Nintendo because they're trying to right their path as a company and try to become profitable and also become back in the spotlight in the video game industry. Yes. So, and from the event, I think uh, I'm pretty psyched. I mean, I liked what I saw. Let's uh, let's jump right in and talk about it. Um, it releases on March the third, which, which is like just around the corner. That's getting pretty close. Uh, they announced it officially back at the end of last year, um, but this press conference was uh, like. An official reveal uh, that had w went more in depth than the, just the the announcement. It was pretty long too. It was well over an hour. Yeah, I know that it streamed on Twitch is where I watched it. IGN is where I watched it. So it they, they made sure that this press release was big. Um, right now they're talking about the launch price being two hundred ninety nine dollars U S. and that's pretty competitive when you talk about next generation consoles. That's right. Um, it's going to have a. Uh, well, let's just talk about its form factor. Basically, you, you get two things in one. You get a full console and a handheld gaming unit, which kind of reminds you of what they were trying to get along with the Wii U, but it, it looks like they pulled it off a little bit better this time. And it also kind of reminds you of the NVIDIA Shield. I don't know if anybody else saw one of those, but they made a tablet and also a kind of like a streaming box, and they named them both the Shield. It was really confusing, but the tablet was kind of like this. It was kind of supposed to be a high-end gaming tablet, but it didn't really take off. Um, but this looks like it may have a little bit more in store for us than just a tablet. Right, because uh, it comes, it, it has a dock, and so when you're not using it in a handheld mode uh, for single-player, well, actually, you can do multiplayer in handheld if somebody else is around where you're at and ha happens to have one, too. But... Uh, did the did the shield have a dock or was it trying to stream the video? The shield uh, media center also it was it would stream from your PC, but the shield tablet didn't have a dock or anything. It was a straight tablet, no physical input at all. Also, oh, no way to get it. No, it was a seven inch tablet. Okay, so there's no way to get it to the TV. So that that they have an advantage there. Um, well, the dock has a HDMI out, which is great. Finally, an industry standard. Uh, connection from Nintendo. Yeah, on the Wii U, it, it had HDMI, but before that, uh, I, the Wii didn't have any high def out at all. You made it maybe component, maybe. Yeah, or, uh, I think you could buy an adapter. Yeah, but um, yeah, HDMI out. Uh, it's going to have 32 gigs of internal storage, expandable through a micro SD card slot, uh, which that seems to be pretty standard for a tablet anyway. 32 gigabytes. Right. And then having the extra storage through the SD card kind of makes a, uh, a little bit of a difference. Yeah, because you can get what... I know uh, we have a 128 gig micro SD card that we play around on our retro Pi with, and I'm sure you said you saw one as big as what? I'm pretty sure 512 is as big. Wow, half a terabyte. Yeah. That's great. But um, it also is going to have 
solid state proprietary game media. So no discs, no. It probably will have digital downloads at some point, but you can buy the discs on actual physical media that is not a CD. It looks kind of like an SD. Card. It does look like an SD card. I mean, it's, it's similar in size and. Uh, but it, again, it's proprietary. It won't uh, read in a standard SD card reader. And back to the form factor. So I'm going to give kind of a, a brief A to Z on what this thing is. Uh, like we said before, seven inch tablet form factor, but it has two controllers that attach to the sides. We'll get into those in a little bit more in depth later. But, but and then like Chris said, the dock. Um, and so pretty much you're talking about a tablet, physical joysticks, and a dock that you can use to also play on your TV. Right. Now, I haven't heard anybody say, do you know, um, we're going to talk about the actual titles that will be available on launch day and then released uh, throughout the year a little bit later, but has anybody said if it comes with any games out of the box? Because I'm, they kind of used to do that. Don't hold me to this, but I, I imagine there'll be some kind of bundle you can buy because that seems to be, uh, once again, an industry standard now is a bundle of some sort. You buy an Xbox Assassin's Creed Unity bundle or mm-hmm. a PlayStation uh, Uncharted bundle. It, it just seems to be something that every company's doing. And Nintendo is trying to come back to kind of what everybody else is doing because being off on their own hasn't really been that good of a time for them. So No, and then we'll jump right in because they're going to, uh, they've announced that they have third party developer support, which is huge. Uh, first party Nintendo games are awesome. I'm a huge Nintendo fanboy. But at the end of the day, the mass market. They want third-party games. And they dictate, really, what, how, how far your sales go. Exactly, because uh, like we said before, Nintendo people are Nintendo people, and they're going to buy those first-party games. But if you don't have anybody developing for it, you, you want more than six games for your console. That's the truth. Um, the thing's supposed to have between three and six-hour battery life when it's undocked and you're playing in handheld mode. Um, and they say that it's going to vary based on uh, what type of game you're playing, you know, how much graphics processing it's doing with the game. It's like the difference between, you know, uh, something that's really heavy, graphically intensive, and something that's fairly simple will probably make a difference there. So uh, launch titles. Let's talk about launch titles. All right, so launch titles. First and foremost, we're going to talk about Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is a big deal. Uh, Zelda is a huge title for first-party Nintendo games. Uh, I've always been a Zelda fan. Chris, I've played Zelda since I was just small. So so having a Zelda game come out on launch is definitely going to help sales because people are going to want to play Zelda. Is this the first one since when? 2012? Uh, I think the last one they made not on a handheld was maybe the Wind Waker remake okay. for the Wii U, which it was good. And they may have made one more for the Wind Wii U. What? Wind Walker? Wind Waker. Waker, wow. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was a good game. It was a port from the GameCube over to the Wii U, but this is going to be a whole new title. It's supposed to be open world, which is a big deal. Everybody playing RPGs now wants an open world RPG. Um, past that, the graphics look really good. Yeah, they one. did look really good. And that that's one thing that I'm kind of excited about because, you know, even when uh, the Wii came out, it was still the graphics were fairly simple. And also the Wii U, uh, not a huge improvement there. And so some of the video that we've seen, and we're probably going to be showing it on the screen too uh, while we're doing this, but from the gameplay, it looks pretty pretty real, realistic and good. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we've talked about it or not yet, but the processor that this... Oh, no, we haven't. Um, it's, the processor for this console is going to be made by NVIDIA. It's uh, of their Tegra line. Is that correct? That's right. Um, which... Still not, I mean, super powered by any means, but it's definitely a step up from what they've used in, in past consoles. So once again, I think that they're using this NVIDIA platform to help garner that third-party support from uh, third-party developers. So uh, it's, I'm going to be interested to see how this thing plays once we get it in hand. Right. Um, they're also going to be looking at a party game right off the bat, the 1-2 Switch. And I think from what I saw in the demo... Uh, there's like a quick draw game and there's like a, a race to milk a cow. <laughs> that Tell me that one's not going to be fun when a bunch of people get drunk and, and <laughs> Snapchat that. <laughs> Nintendo's always been good with party games. Uh, WarioWare was a was one of those party type games. Uh, you had uh, Wii Sports yes. for the Wii. That was, that was uh, huge. That was huge. So it, having some kind of party game, especially with how this thing's portable and they're talking about uh, bringing it to other people's houses, stuff like that. It, it's going to be a, a good thing for this console. And also because uh, we'll get into the controllers a little bit more, but uh, being that you have, you know, uh, what, 
uh, accelerometers and gyroscopes in each controller as long as physical buttons. So, I mean, there's a lot you can do right out of the bat for party style games and, and games like Just Dance 2017. Which is also going to be a launch title. Uh, Just Dance, I imagine, is going to kind of be like the one for the Wii where you have the two controllers in your hand and it tracks your motion. Uh, a lot of people like Just Dance. That's not something that me or Chris are really into. Oh, it's, but, that's ugly. But it may be uh, something that helps the console succeed. And the next one is uh, Skylanders Imaginators. Um, you were trying to kind of fill me in on that one because I never really bought into it. I used to see I, the little characters that they had with Skylanders games from past. but They had uh, Skylanders for the Wii U, I believe. But Nintendo uh, launched a game and toy system called Amiibo that they used for the Wii U, which is kind of weird to me that a launch title for this is going to be Skylanders Imaginators, and I haven't heard anything about the Amiibo. I haven't either. Especially, so you'd think you'd seen it if it was going to happen because it's so close. Yeah, so um, I'm not, just speculation, but it may be Amiibo, might be a thing of the past. So if you bought the Amiibo characters, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, Super Bomberman R, which is uh, something that not a lot of people are talking about as a launch title, but I think I, I saw that one confirmed today. And I'm not real familiar with that one, are you? Uh, I'm not familiar with this title. I know Bomberman back from the NES days. A uh, little guy dropping bombs. <laughs> it looks like a, a kind of a puzzle type game, and based on where you drop the bombs, is you know you can solve the puzzle. I don't know. That's what it looked like based on the gameplay that I saw. But uh, moving on to releases that will be happening later in the year, uh, in we have Arms, and they demoed that one. That thing looks amazing. It looks really cool. It looks like. Uh, it's a fighting game for one. It's, it's a like, fighting game, but it's not your typical fighting game. Pretty much it's you versus another player, and it's a boxing game, but it's like you have boxing gloves that are attached to spring ribbon things. Yes, uh, so that they stretch. You'll be standing literally yards away from your opponent and be able to make contact. And, and based on the use of the gyroscopes and the accelerometers, you can curve punches. So you anticipate the movement of your opponent and try to land punches. And then also... Uh, the the gloves or the hands are interchangeable and they also have different weapons and different you know functionality so you choose you know that type of thing based on your opponent and what their strengths and weaknesses are that's one thing nintendo seems to be pretty good at is taking these what you would be a regular fighting game and turning them into something completely different and offbeat so i'm, I'm excited to play this one i am too uh, and then here's another one I'm really excited to play, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Yeah, so that's a uh, port from the Wii U, but Mario Kart has such success. I don't care where it came from. If there's Mario Kart on it, I'm going to play it, and Chris is, I'm sure, oh, in the yeah. same boat. And uh, there's supposed to be like uh, cameo characters from other uh, games in, in, in this thing, too, so that should be really neat. Um, then tell them about Splatoon, because I wasn't familiar with that one. Uh, Splatoon was a game that was released for the Wii U, it's a territorial paint shooter game, which sounds really weird, but it, it had big success for, well, in terms of the Wii U. It had pretty, <laughs> pretty good success. It sold seven copies. So pretty much what it is is uh, two teams, and you each have paint guns, and you try to paint as much of the map as you can. But uh, like I said, it, it had big success on the Wii U, so Splatoon 2 should also carry on that, that game and be, be pretty good. Um, Pokemon Stars. Pokemon Stars is a port of Sun and Moon from the DS or the new DS. Oh. Uh, those both looked really good on the new DS. So once again, Pokemon is another one of those titles. Doesn't matter what it's on. If you have Pokemon, people are going to buy it. So that's an, another big deal for this. As one. evidenced by the success of uh, Pokemon on the iOS and my shirt from our first video. Oh yeah. <laughs> And then uh, one that I'm really, really interested to play, uh, Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah, that, that game looks amazing. Uh, everybody that plays video games has to have some kind of love for Mario. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's really the, the, the game that started it all. I mean, there were games beforehand, don't get me wrong. We had Pong. And yeah. uh, what else was there that I used to play? Space Invaders, Asteroids, some of the 20, Atari 2600 games. But... When, it, when gaming really took off was on the NES with Mario. Yeah, and this is bringing Mario into the, the next generation of consoles. 
It's an open world Mario game, uh, set in like a faux New York City type environment. Right, and then I think, from what I understand, New York City's or the city is going to be like a portal to other places. So there's like tons of other stuff to explore and do. So it should be really interesting. And and the open world aspect uh, is something I really like. And don't get me wrong, I love a good platformer, but. Uh, you take a platformer and turn it around to where you can go any which way you want to, and it's really interesting at that point. I think my well, one of my favorite games of all time was the original Tomb Raider. Yeah. And I'll, just the, the exploration ability and the ability to you know not be stuck on a, a horizontal plane is you know that's cool. Yeah, I, I love horizontal platformers as much as the next guy. But this game looks really good, and I'm excited to see Mario in kind of a different light. Because even Super Mario 64 was kind of where they first started venturing away from that horizontal side-scrolling platformer. It was a great game, but this is going to take it even a step further because you have open-world exploration. But fear you not, if you are a horizontal platformer, we've got a surprise. It's not listed uh, on the screen up there, but uh, Sonic, is, uh, Sega game, is coming to the Nintendo, and hell did not freeze over. I'm just going to tell you, that's kind of weird, especially from back in the day. They were big, uh, big art travels. Nintendo kind of won out in the console wars in that period. And uh, but it's fun to see Sonic coming. And and you would think that they would develop, you know, a more open world style uh, modern game. But what they've done is they've taken uh, their classic uh, Sonic game and just kind of added some really cool levels to it and gave it some uh, just a little bit of a. Uh, upfit, I guess I would say. We all know nostalgia sells, so oh yeah, it should it, do well. It should do well. Um, so, how are you going to control these things? Uh, the Joy Cons are kind of the the big deal with this. We talked about the tablet. Um, so, like I said, it's a tablet with two controllers attached to it, but they also operate as one controller. So, I'm gonna let Chris kind of elaborate on this. All right, so basically these two sides, if you can see up on the screen that I'm circling right here, um, they slide down onto the uh, tablet and they also operate independently. So let's say you have your tablet with you with the Joy-Cons attached to the side and you want to go play and your friend wants to play too. You can take those things off hand your friend one side of it, you use the other side and it operates as a full controller. And from what I understand, uh, it has... Uh, both analog uh, joystick and four buttons and shoulder buttons. So it's yeah. really got a lot of control for that small of a controller. And plus each side also has, like we said earlier, the accelerometer and gyroscopes in it. So it should be it should be quite interesting. But for the hardcore guy, they do have something else too. Yeah, it's gonna be, um, the Wii U had a controller they called the Wii U Pro Controller. And it's very similar to that, but it's gonna be uh, a more, I guess, gamer centered controller uh so think of xbox playstation 4 uh, something that you're used to playing a two axis shooter on yeah and it looks like it has two analog sticks as well as a d-pad then triggers shoulders four buttons it really looks stuff. a lot like a different shaped xbox controller if yeah. we want to be completely brutally honest yeah so but that should give you just about you know anything you'd want in a way to control these games so it's going to be really interesting to see when they get around um Gameplay. So you've got several options. So we've mentioned a few of them so far. But we'll just run over them again. You have your solo handheld gameplay where you have the tablet with the Joy-Cons attached to the side. So it's kind of, you know, interpersonal. And then you have uh, tabletop, which allows you to do uh, multiplayer, which means you take the Joy-Cons off and the thing's got a little kickstand on the back of it. And uh, you put it on top of the table. And that's kind of cool, but you can also do multiplayer that way. Uh, so uh, one of the games that they show with that one is uh, NBA. So they're playing NBA, I guess it's NBA Live now. Or no, uh, NBA 2K17. 2K17, okay. God, how old am I? Yeah. That's like a 2002 game. But I like, I like, I want to talk about this tabletop for just a second because it's a pretty neat idea uh, being able to take your console uh, somewhere else. Um, say you want to go eat with your buddies at a, a bar. Right, you can take your console with you, and while you guys are having a beer, you can have a NBA live tournament right yeah. there at the bar. So I mean, it's it's a pretty cool concept that uh, I hope really takes off. And from what I've read, you can connect up to eight of them for multiplayer game play at one time. So eight people have consoles, and all of them have their view of the of the action. So that that's really cool. And then of course it has normal console style big screen TV play when you dock it in. So yeah, so you slide it in the dock. You can either use your Joy-Cons 
or the Pro Controller and play just like you would play your Xbox or your PlayStation. A lot of options here, so I could see, I mean, there's hundreds of types of games that are going to come out. So um, what are your what are your final thoughts here? I think there's a few things that Nintendo really needs to get right on this for this to be successful. Uh, the first being third-party developer support. Um, that's a huge deal. Uh, another one being their first-party games. They, they always publish their first-party games, but they need to be spot on and they need to come in a pretty pretty uh, good succession. So they need to put one out a few months later another one needs to come out so they can keep their uh, original Nintendo fanboys and girls interested all the time. And think? also build their library faster. Oh, definitely. Um, one of the things that I'm a little bit disappointed in is that they're pushing it out kind of early, I think, in terms of the amount of titles they're going to have available at launch. Because to be honest with you, there's probably, well, really, only Zelda that I'm really interested in at starting. You know, I'll probably pick up the, the Switch or 1-2 Switch just, you know, to have. But I don't really care about Super Bomberman. And I'm, as we talked about earlier, nobody wants to see this. Dude. <laughs> I almost see 1-2 Switch being a packaged game. Don't yeah. want to do that, but I think that that's probably going to be uh, what, what you're looking at. But uh, I'm definitely with Chris here. Um, I, if if they can uh, bolster their library soon, uh, right as of right now, what they've listed is not a big library at all. No, uh, that even with all the games that they've announced that are coming out. So, but you know, it'll be a lot more by the end of the year. They'll pick up some new developers. And uh, well, one thing that's really interesting to me is uh, we jumped on and tried to do a pre-order the same day that the announcement came out, and I'm talking within maybe an hour or two of the announcement, and sold out on Best Buy pre-orders were, they're sold out on GameStop, they're sold out on Target, uh, Amazon was sold out, and Walmart was sold out. So that's five major players that are sold out of their uh, launch date allotments within literally an hour of the thing going live. And that's going to be that's going to be good for. I know I keep harping on third-party support, but that is what killed the Wii U, and I don't want to see this console go in the same way. But the the big sales are going to help the, these developers have confidence in this system and hopefully uh, give them, like I said, the confidence they need to go ahead and put some money and some development into this thing. Yeah. And while we're talking about it, uh, we'd like to give one of these things away. So, so what we're going to do is, if, and this is a big if, if we can have 1,000 subscribers by the time we get our hands on one to review then that one's going to be one of our subscribers. We're going to uh, pick one at random, so uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button, click that like, and you may be the person that ends up getting it. So help us get to that 1,000. If we can't, we'll do another giveaway later, but this is our goal right now. So All Right. Well, we appreciate you uh, spending some time with us today to learn a bit, little bit more about the, the Nintendo Switch, and we'll see you next time. Next time.